Hey everybody, what's up? It's Paul Postal from the Digital Mapmakers Academy, and I've got a new series that I'm launching with this video. And we're going to be talking about Dungeon Alchemist and how you can export those um, maps that you make in Dungeon Alchemist over to Fantasy Grounds. So we're going to do this in a series of videos because it's a lot of content. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the export settings in Dungeon Alchemist. We're then going to take a look at lighting in Fantasy Grounds once you get your map over to Fantasy Grounds. And then we're going to look and see what different export resolutions from Dungeon Alchemist look like. And I'm going to line those up and put them on the screen of Fantasy Grounds so you can see exactly the difference in the detail. We're going to look at using occluders in Fantasy Grounds and how you can use that for line of sight and to limit movement for your players. And then one thing I do want to talk about that I haven't seen mentioned in other YouTube videos, and maybe I've missed it, and that's certainly possible, but what happens if you make the lighting, the ambient lighting in your Dungeon Alchemist maps too dark, and then you export that over to Fantasy Grounds? And then finally, we're going to wrap up with a short discussion about how not everything in Dungeon Alchemist has a cluder, so when you export it over to Fantasy Grounds, you'll still have to include some occluders. Uh, once again for line of sight and to limit movement for your players. Let's go ahead and jump in and start by looking at the export settings in Dungeon Alchemist. Okay, so here's a map that I made in Dungeon Alchemist, and this is a jungle map that I use um, that I made using some of the new uh, jungle features, which I think, which I think is actually um, pretty cool. Um, so one of the things you're going to notice here is that I did change the lighting, and it's kind of a greenish lighting, which I thought was kind of cool as well. I've got the torches um, looking green um, on the screen as well, um, as you can see on the screen behind me, and put a giant statue head in there, put in some jars, put in some drums and uh, some other pottery and some other decoration. I think it looks really cool. Now you'll notice that I have a door in there. Now this map doesn't have any outside areas with it. It's just a single room map. And one of the things we're gonna see in Fantasy Grounds is when we get over there, is that if you're making a single room map, I highly recommend you don't have any door occluders that your players can open um, in Fantasy Grounds. I would just make them complete walls as in, like, you plan your, on your players to be in this room for a while, and you just move their tokens, you know, over onto this map, and they didn't walk into it from another hallway or from another room or from outside or something like that. Also, you'll notice I don't have any windows in here. And the reason why I don't have any windows is because, again, there's no outside area. So your players are going to be seeing nothing if they're, they move their tokens to the window and there's nothing out there so if you do an area like this i recommend that you just don't have any windows and again don't have any um we'll have doors but when you get over into fantasy grounds you can change those occluders from a door over into the wall but anyway let's go ahead and take a look at the export settings here so when you're going to export your map then um what you just need to do very easy just go to file and click here on export and we're going to go through some of these settings and you're probably already familiar with these settings, but for those who are new to Dungeon Alchemist, I thought it'd just be cool to make a quick video to go over this. Um, so here is where you can choose your format and what VTT you're going to go into. And you've got Foundry, you've got Fantasy Grounds, Roll20, a general VTT export. Um, if you want to make an, make an image only or if you want to export you know, for printing out. Obviously, we're going to go with Fantasy Grounds because that's the VTT I use. Now you have different perspectives you can use, and I've got mine set on the 3D walls because I just think they're so freaking cool. Now, if you have a very large map though, you don't want to use the full 3D walls. And the reason why is because um, for large maps like that, it can make your map, from what I understand, too big, the file size too big, and you go to load it into Fantasy Grounds, it may take a while for your computer to load, and then when you share the map with your players, it may take a while for that big map to load as well. But if you still want some of the perspective, you can use the limited perspective, which is like this. So you'll see how it lowered the walls down just a little bit. And so that's a good one to use if you have a larger map. Now, if you are just, you know, hardcore old school and you just like the top down and you just want to go with just the orthographic, you can do that. And let me get rid of this X so you can see, oh, of course, when I did that, it completely got rid of it. Okay, so let's change this back to the orthographic. Um, oh, I know how I can show it to you. Um, I forgot about this. Clicking up here in the top right. So we've got it on the 3D perspective. And here is the orthographic. And this is just the plain top-down 
view. Um, again, this is old school. If you like it, great. Um, I just think if you've got the capability of doing 3D perspective walls, why not just go with that? So we're going to go with that. So let's go back to export. Now, um, that's your perspectives here. Now, when it comes to lighting, you've got several options here when it comes to lighting. Apologies, I was just looking down at my notes. Um, you can go with render lights in the image and export the VTT. And what that's going to do, it's going to render the lighting in your image, and it's also going to export the lights over in the Fantasy Grounds. And if you're not familiar with Fantasy Grounds, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get over there. Um, you can do only render the lights in the image, and from what I understand, that is, it just renders just the lights um, in the image um, itself, but it doesn't export, like, the, it doesn't put the actual lights into Fantasy Grounds, so you'll have to add those yourself. Or you can do only export lights, and it doesn't render the lighting in the image, it only exports the lights in Fantasy Grounds, and then you can take those lights and manipulate them and do whatever you want with them. Honestly, when I was experimenting with this earlier today, I didn't really see a whole lot of difference between render lights in image and export to VTT and this third one, only export lights to VTT. So if somebody can explain to me a difference in the comments, that's great. Again, I didn't see a whole lot of difference in there. The one I'm going to go with is render lights in the image and export to VTT because that's a default setting. Now, you have different image qualities here. You can go with the low quality, which is 72, uh, the high quality, which is 150 DPI, very high quality, which is 300. What's going to make your decision here is on how powerful your computer is. If you don't have that powerful of a computer, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize. If you don't have that powerful of a computer, then you can go with low quality. That's 72 dots per inch. It'll load quickly on your computer, and um, then you'll be good to go. Um, then you also have the higher quality, which is 150, and very high quality, which is 300 DPI. Um, I'm not confident on this, but it may also have to do with how powerful your player's computers are as well. Um, on Fantasy Grounds, I used to use the port forwarding. I don't do that anymore. Um, I use the cloud um, computing, the cloud connection. Um, so it's much less processing on my computer. Um, so I imagine that when you're using the cloud computing, or the cloud connection rather, that also the quality of the maps is going to have an impact on your player's computers as well. So you might want to think about that when you're exporting the maps. If you're still using the port forwarding, then your computer is doing all the processing and just sending the images out to your player's computer. So if you've got a really good rig that can handle that and you're doing the port forwarding, then by all means go with the high quality images. I happen to like the way they look. I don't make big maps anyway, so I stick with the very high quality 300 DPI. I've already got some maps over in Fantasy Grounds, so when we get to that, then I will line them up and I'll show you what the, the difference in the quality looks like. Okay, now the borders here is a little bit different. Depends on how, where you want the borders at. You can have your normal borders. You can have small borders. Honestly, I don't think it really makes a difference because of the line of sight occluders and fantasy grounds. Even if I go with the large borders, then it's putting the occluders around the images here of the map. So my players aren't seeing outside here anyway, and I can't imagine that this right here adds a whole lot to the file size. So I just keep them normal because that's just one less thing that I have to change in the settings. Your color scheme is if you want to print it, then you can just print in the friendly grayscale. We're going to stick with color because I'm using this in a VTT. Now generally, I leave my grids off on my maps, and there's a reason why I don't have my grid off in this map because in a, in a, a future video I'm going to take this very same map and I'm going to show you how you can put it into Photoshop and do some post-processing without messing up your line of sight occluders in the, XML, in the XML file that they are a part of. So you can turn your grid on and off and you can see um, on the screen behind me how it changes. If you turn them on you can see the black lines come in, turn them off, you can do it that way. The reason why I like to leave my grid off for my maps is because I like to, sometimes I'll change the scale from 5 foot, you know, 1 square equals 5 foot to 1 square equals 10 foot. 
I like the flexibility of being able to change the scale like that, which is why I generally leave my grids off. Um, if you do turn them on, which I'm doing for this map, you have your choice of colors. You can make them white, which that really sticks out. You got black, you got gray, you got lighter gray. Green, which is good if you're making an outdoor map and the gray is not showing up and you need something that shows up a little bit, you can do that. You can make them blue, you can make them red. And you have a transparency over here, so you can alter the transparency, make them lighter, you can make them darker, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go back to my black here, and about, that's about where my transparency was at. Now, the reason why I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a, a, uh, a preview of what's coming up in the future video, the reason why I'm leaving my grid on is because I'm going to use, from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the Reckless Steps puzzle, and that's why there's a different floor tile from here compared to here and here. So in a future video, I'm going to go into Photoshop and I've got some um, transparent PNG runes that I found um, online. And I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to put each one of these runes on here. And I'm going to make it look like they were carved into the stone and not simply, you know, just a black... Um, you know marking on there so I'll show you guys how to do that in a in a future video alright so that's pretty much it for the settings so why don't we go ahead and let's um, go ahead and put this over sorry again I'm just looking at my notes let's go ahead and put this over in fantasy grounds and then we'll take a look at it there okay so this wraps up part one for this series of exporting your maps from dungeon alchemist over to fantasy grounds and in the next video we're going to take a look at lighting in fantasy grounds and if you did enjoy the content in this video um, i'd be greatly appreciative if you would go ahead and click like and subscribe um, to my channel so you don't miss uh, a new episode when it comes out also feel free to go ahead and come follow me over on twitter and I'd be more than happy to connect with you there. I'd love to hear your feedback um, on these episodes on my channel. I'd love to also get some feedback from you about what you'd like to see in a future episodes. So please come join me on Twitter. Let's hang out. Let's connect. Thanks again for watching. This is Paul Postal with the Digital Mapmakers Academy. We'll see you next time.